Hello, how are you doing today? We are going to do one of my favorite topics. So as you guys join, please announce and let me know that you're there. We're going to be talking about numbers and making sure that you understand the numbers and the road to six figures in your travel business. Hey T, how are you? Hey Tanika, how are you? I'm glad to have you guys on. Today we're going to do um, numbers, all about the numbers of your business and understanding how do you get to six figures. That's everybody's goal is to get a six-figure business, but oftentimes to get there, we have no idea what it takes to get there. Hey Kimber Riggs, how are you? Nice to have you on. Good, I'm glad you're having a good day, Tanika. T and Kimber, how's your day? We're gonna give it just a couple of minutes. I know that people are interested in the six-figure conversation. <clears throat> Today we're gonna to start with tactics and then we're gonna talk about, after we talk about the numbers, what other major component is necessary for your success. So. This is one of my favorite topics. I love numbers. I love, love, love numbers. So if you know anybody who also loves numbers and likes to talk about numbers and how one achieves things through numbers, then I would encourage you to share this out. If you know any travel agents who are struggling with getting to the 100 figure mark, this is a great conversation to have because really if you know the numbers, then you can make decisions um, based on what you know. So I'm going to give it just a couple more minutes and let some more people join and then we're going to dive right in. And then if you're interested in having this spreadsheet where I'm going to show you during this how you can plug in, uh, plug in these numbers and the formulas or automatically calculate for you, then um, we can uh, just let me know and I'll, um, I'll upload it and tag you. But hopefully everybody's having a great hump day. It is, we are in the third week of February chapter two is almost over lots of art lots has already been done already on my side hopefully you guys are having a good chapter two all right we're right at the five minute mark so I want to get started because I don't want to keep you guys long but hopefully you guys can see the screen and let me expand this just a little bit more so you guys you're not struggling to see this information. So hopefully it's equally um, getting larger on, on your side. Yes, good, there it is, all right. Okay, so we're talking today about 100K. Everybody I talk to always wants to make 100K. So either you're in a job currently and you're not making 100K, and you want to start your own business and you want to make 100K. And everybody talks about 100K, but nobody really breaks it down and talks about what it takes to make 100K. So I've done that for you, and that's what we're going to talk about. Is we're going to talk about the breakdown of 100K per day, per week, per month, and per year, what that looks like if you're just selling services. And then we're going to take a look at a travel agent's example, assuming commission split from you know any travel supplier. I've just used a general travel supplier's commission um, split and then we'll talk through those numbers as well. Um, so hopefully everybody can hear me. Just let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me and you guys can see the information. Are you guys able to see everything? I'm going to make sure that I'm still being able, because if you have questions, I want to be able to um, make sure that I answer the questions that come up, too. Because usually when we're talking about numbers, people always have questions. All right, great. You can hear me, 
and you can see everything perfect. All right, so the first thing that I wanted to do is talk about just generally, most of you as travel agents should have a service or a collection of services that you are charging a fee for. If you do not, then you need to reconsider and add some services to your um, to your menu. You should be charging for, let's say, research fee. You should be charging for um, itinerary services, maybe concierge services. There's all different types of services that you can be charging for as a travel agent, and you do not have to rely on commission alone. You could also charge for training if you do any sort of training, maybe if you do books, if you do all sorts of things. So I wanted to start with the concept of actually having services that you are going to charge for. And that's what the top of this here is saying, is if you want to make 100K, right, you need to be bringing in $8,333,000 a month. $1,923 a week, $275 per day in order to make $100,000 a year, right? So this just gives you what those straight numbers are on a monthly, weekly, and daily basis so, so that you're clear about what that is. Now, if you're selling a service or a product that costs $12, it, you, it will require you to sell 8,300 of these products in a year's period, $6.94 per month, $160 per week, and $23 per day if you want to make $100,000. And what this chart shows you, as you increase the price for your service or product, that's how much you need to sell, right? So obviously, as the price goes up, the less that you need to sell, right? So if you're selling a service or you have a product that's $2,500, you only need to sell 40 of those a year, three a month, one a week in order for you to hit the four, the $100,000 mark, right? So clearly, the higher your service prices are or your products are, the less customers you need to have in order to sell that, right? That's just basic math. So that shouldn't be any major surprise to anyone. The reason I have this top chart here is because I want to show you the power of just adding services to your bottom line, right? So if you are not charging for services in your travel business, I would encourage you to think about that as a practice and as a part of your operation, and then think about what services can you charge and people will pay for, right? So one of the things that we did in January is, is I introduced to you the concept of a new service that you could add to your travel agency called the plan your time off, where you meet with your customers and you actually sit with them and you structure and work with them to actually plan their time off. Statistics say that over 50% of Americans, I'm not even talking worldwide, Americans do not take their planned vacation, right? So you as a travel agent are in a unique position to help people take advantage of the time that they already have built into their job, right? So this is not even time you have to find for them. You just need to help them organize themselves such that they can actually take the time off. So that is a service that I introduced to you. Now let's just say you charged $97 for that service, right? You know, in order to make $100,000, you need to have 1,000 clients, you know, at $97 for that service for you to make $100,000. Now, I'm not, that's just assuming you didn't do anything else, right? If you had 1,000 customers in a year, you would make $100,000 just with a service-based business. Now, I will tell you that you can charge for your travel services. You just need to be very clear about what those services are. It needs to be a value to your ideal client, and it needs to be something that they would be willing to pay for. People are willing to pay for booking uh, services, right? That you people, I know that many travel agents are scared to charge a booking fee for actually doing quotes for people, but you would be surprised how quickly people will take their checkbook out when they realize that they don't have to worry about 
doing any of the research and you will take all of it out of, out of, off of their hands, really. So it's really about positioning yourself as the go-to person for them to book travel. People will pay $50, $75, $100, depending on the type of niche that you're in and the type of service that you include in your booking, you can charge upwards of $200, really. I know of a case study that I read where they're charging $995 for uh, research, putting together vacation packages for their customers, right? $1,000 for those services. Now, it includes complete, you know, white glove service. The customer doesn't have to worry about booking anything. When they're on vacation, that agent is available to them if they need to make any changes in their itinerary or anything. That's what's included in that service. So, I want you guys to really take a look at if you do not charge service fees for your travel agency, is there opportunity for you to add that as a part of your service fee? And, you know, hands down, I will tell you that it is. There's a great opportunity to do that. So that's what the top of this number is here, is you simply charging $50, right? You need 2,000 clients, right? Even if you do a percentage of that, you know, to make $50,000 a year, just in service fee, you only need a thousand clients, right? And that may seem like a lot, but if you really have a good strong marketing um, plan and you have a good marketing presence, getting a thousand people to uh, ask for custom quotes and pay fifty dollars, depending on what market you're in, it really is not a stretch, right? That's again just in fees alone. All right, so I'm going to pause for a second and ask, does anyone have any questions on just the basic calculation for fees? So again, the top part here is the price per service, right? So how much you're charging for your services or your products. Let's say you create an ebook, right, on, you know, the best way a family of five can, you know, budget their vacation under $1,000. You write an ebook there and you charge $12 for that ebook or even $25 for that ebook, right? In order to hit $1,000 in sales for that ebook, you would need to have 4,000 copies sold, right? So the numbers, again, pretty simple calculation here um, in order for you to determine $1,000, right? Your job right? Second job, third job that I always tell you, first job is to market your business. Second job is to do your superpower, which is to be a travel agent and to sell services. You need to define what value you provide your customers that would warrant you charging a particular service fee or products, right? Your job is to create and define that value. All right, so let's go to the second example. Let me pause, just make sure there's not any questions. Hey, April. Hey, Sharonda. And hello, Simone. Glad to have you guys on. So now we're going to talk about, as a travel agent, our, the majority of travel agents' income comes from travel supplier commissions, right? Many of you are not fully independent and you rely on your relationship with your host agency. So what I did here is did a simple calculation to show you what it would look like for you to make $100,000 in a year's time with just one supplier, assuming that that supplier gave you 16% commission. That's pretty standard in the cruise industry, right? Cruises, I was looking at one cruise line and they actually um, provide 18%, but let's just assume that the cruise line, you pick Carnival, Royal Caribbean, any of them with most of the host agencies have a commission split of 16%. Assuming your host agency gives you 80%, the new blended rate would be 12.8% after the cut, the host agency's cut. So let's talk about then what those numbers look like from there. Now, what's important for you guys, hold on, let me make sure I fix this so you guys can see all these numbers. Uh-oh. Okay, so what's important for you to realize Happy Winning Wednesday, Yolanda. All right, so what's important to realize in these numbers is that that 12.8% is effectively what your rate would look like after you give 20% to 
uh, the host agency because of the, the, the cut. Okay, so again, this is if you want to make $100,000 in a year with commissions only, you need to sell $781,000 in sales. You need to have gross sales of $781,000, right? Now, immediately you may be like, oh my God, that is a whole hell of a lot of sales, right? Not really when you take into account how much a vacation costs, right? And that's what's on this row here, this 800, 1600, 3200, 64, 12,000, and 25,000. Assuming the average vacation that you sell at $800 per person, you would need to sell 977 vacations in order for you to hit $1,000 in commissions at 16%. 12% 12, 12 after your cut, all right? So I'm gonna pause, just make sure everybody understands kind of what that math looks like. Um, this is a live, so it is recorded, Yolanda, so you'll be able to just go on the live video stream and see this later. All right, assuming that your average vacation sale is 1,600, you immediately cut that in half to 488 vacations that you need to sell in a year. If you're selling vacations at 3,200, you only need to sell 244 per year. 6,400 and up, you see how the total number of vacations that you need to sell per year goes exponentially down, right? So the question before I even go into how you get here from a marketing perspective is, do you guys know what your average vacation sell is that you're aiming for for your customers. If you don't even know that, you're going to have a really hard time making $100,000 in a year. If you don't know what your target average vacation sell is and the type of customer that wants to spend that kind of money, you are going to have a hard time making $100,000. Now, Yolanda, you're in Travelpreneur Foundations. We're going to go over the details of how you get here over the next several weeks. So I don't want you to worry. But for those who are not in Travelpreneur Foundations and you have no idea how to do this, here's a couple of things that you need to take into consideration. One, you need to understand what level you're selling at. Are you selling at an $800 level or are you selling at a $25,000 level? Are you trying to sell packages or do you not even know? Are you just randomly selling to people not even understanding what the average price point is for what it is that you're selling? Right? That's really important for you to understand as an entrepreneur. What's the average price that you're trying to sell vacations at? What type of customer are you trying to sell to? Is it somebody who is looking for 800? Because that's a different customer than a customer who's willing to spend $25,000 on their vacation, right? Those are distinctly very different customers who are willing to do that, right? These are different markets. It may be you were trying to sell group packages at $25,000 per group package, right? Um, and you want to create those kind of packages, and that would require you to sell 31 groups at 25000 right? That's a different way to look at it. But you need to be really clear about who you're selling to, what the average price is that they're willing to purchase so that you understand how to make these numbers come to fruition. Now, there's some of you who are travel agents right now who are on, the, on this live. I'd like to know what's your average price point that you're trying to sell at. How much are you trying to, on average, create packages for? Are you at the $800 mark? Are you at the $12,000 mark, the $3,200 mark? Tell me what it is. Let me know in the comments. Let me know. What mark are you at? Even Yolanda, what mark would you like to be at, right? I'm going to tell you for me, my average is about $3,200. I look for clients who are anywhere from the 3200 to the 6400 mark. That's who my client is. They are willing to spend on their vacations 6400, 32 to 6400. So I usually average about a $4000 package when I sell them per 
per, per, per family, per client, or what have you. Where do you want to be? Let's talk about that. Where would you like to be in the market? That's going to drive you this number that you pick. And if you don't know, tell me that you don't know. But I want you to commit to thinking about it, right? What number do you want to be selling at in terms of your travel? And, you know, many of you are probably thinking, well, I don't know how much money I want to be selling at. Well, I want you to pick a number. What number do you want? Because if you don't pick a number, that means you're trying to sell everything to everyone, right? You need to be crystal clear about is your client a $6,400 client or are they an $800 client? Are you trying to be a budget-friendly travel agency or are you trying to be a luxury travel agency? Your customer, how much are they willing to open up their pocket for? Okay, so Tanika, it's fair that you don't know. That's something that we'll be working on in Travelpreneur is understanding your client and how much they're willing to spend. Again, my client, my travel client is willing to spend 3200 to 64 So how I target them, how I market to these people would be significantly different than how I market to these people. Even how I operate my business would be significantly different between a $3,200 client versus a $25,000 client. Does that make sense? I would not try and sell Okay, so Yolanda, you say 3,600 to 9,000. That's a really big gap, right? So I will tell you that a $25,000 client, right, how I operate and my operations is going to be different than a client that I'm booking at $800. Let me give you an example. If I'm doing a group package, uh, let's do a group package or even a family vacation that's worth $25,000, right? I'm not even going to do a pre-package at this rate. I'm going to do a custom, this will be a custom quote. It would be somebody who was probably making anywhere from $250,000 to half a million dollars annually. That would be the type of person I would target in terms of their income, right? The type of onboarding uh, service that I would have would probably be in this range a $250 uh, service fee for, just to meet with me so that we could talk about planning your vacation and what it looks like, right? That My services would be different. My service fees would be different. How I conduct that service uh, consultation. So I usually do a consultation with every customer that requires a custom booking so that I'm really clear about their requirements, right? This would probably include at a $25,000 mark, that would include more questions because I would have more services that I would include as part of my standard fee than I would for something that's $800, right? My $800 custom quote customer is probably at a $25 booking cert research fee, right? I'm not including anything but air and hotel. You get the bare bones, right? Right? So, you know, I probably am not even doing a research uh, consultation with them. I'm probably doing a questionnaire and that's it. I send it to them. I do maybe a quick 15 minute conversation and that's it, right? Or I'm even maybe doing that through chat or via email. I'm not even getting on the phone with them, right? That is going to be significantly different than if I was running a business where my clients were $25,000 clients, right? So even the way I run my business, potentially my service fees, all of that, the types of services that are included or not would be different if my average packages were 800 versus 25,000. So it's really important. Again, I cannot stress how important it is for you to understand the type of customer you're after and what their average spend is that you're after. Because again, those customers and how you operate your business may be significantly different. Now, now that you've decided who you're after and how much you, you want to be on average making per customer, right, now let's talk about what your marketing strategy numbers need to be in order for you to be able to hit these numbers consistently. So let's just pick this 6,400 column and let's work through this. And let me give you some statistics that are important for you to understand from a numbers perspective. We're in the business of attracting strangers. We've talked about that during the five-day challenge. 
um, throughout, that there is a whole process that we need to follow in terms of moving people down the relationship, you know, the relationship funnel that we are creating in our business, right? So we need to be in front of strangers pretty consistently and on a regular basis so that we are getting, you know, providing value and growing our email list, you know, month over month over month. And we're continuing to provide value so that people are interested in our services and ultimately become our customers and buy our products and services, right? So we talked about that. And at the top of that funnel is what we call our stranger offer and the number of prospects that we need to be getting in a particular time period. So let's assuming the 6,400 uh, 6, mark, that your average price point for your travel sales is 6,400. You need to be attracting per year strangers getting in front of about 120,000 customers per year, right? Attracting that. Now, I would ask you before I even explain to you the rest of these numbers, are you in front of 120,000 $120, people in your current marketing strategy? Do you have a marketing strategy that allows you to get in front of those kinds of numbers on a consistent basis? My sneaky suspicion is many of you will say no, right? You probably do some guerrilla marketing and you're in front of people that you meet regularly, but you know, unless you're in, you know, some aggressive type of uh, network where you get exposure to that number of people and you have direct exposure to them and you're able to build a relationship, nine times out of 10, most of you are not able or are not in front of 120,000 people. Let's assume you're at the 800 mark, right? In order to get 1% of those customers ultimately to convert to 977, you need to be in front of almost a million customers every year. New customers. This is attracting new strangers to your business, right? If you're average selling 800 and you know, I'm getting some wows here and that's, that's a fact, right? There's not very many platforms that you can do that and get in front of that number of people without one, investing in advertising, two, having a plan of action that ensures that your message and that you are in front of that volume like paid advertising will or social media um, marketing is going to allow you to do. You easily can get in front of 976,000 people in a year's time using Facebook ads. No question about it, right? You know, at some point, I actually need to do a demo of the back end of my Facebook account and show you that when I run ads, you know, getting in front of 76,000, 75,000 uh, people per day is a norm for me when I'm running ads, right? So 976, if you're at the 800, you know, if you're at the 25,000 mark, you know, you have to be have some really honed in marketing, but you only need to get into your target market, attract about 30,000 people into your funnel, right? Now, the second level, which we talked about in the five day challenge is the acquaintance level, which is where you have now, you have, you know, you've attracted the, you've gotten these emails, you're building a relationship and you are now setting appointments, right? You're setting appointments to actually meet with these people, get their requirements. You're getting, you know, you're trying to do custom quotes, you're meeting with them to do plan your, vac you know, plan your time off, whatever service or whatever consultation you are building in or uh, acquaintance type of offer that you're building in. Maybe it's webinars, maybe it's training, maybe it's, you know, most of you may be doing consultations, but that's the idea. The second level assumes that once you attract 1% of the population, you should be able to convert that, that population at 40% into some sort of lead right, that you can then begin to develop a nurture, a nurture relationship. So that 97,000 turns into 9,700, 9, right, 
that you need to be able to get into your warm market. These are people that are beginning to know, like, and trust you. They, they've opened up your purse, their purse, potentially. Maybe they bought one of your eBooks. Maybe they have paid for a custom quote, right? They've done something that has moved them down the funnel and are you are now uh, building a deeper relationship with them. So I'm going to pause before I go to the next level and make sure that that makes sense. So remember, we talked about our three stages of customers. You've got stranger, acquaintance, and BFF. All right, does anybody have any questions about that? So here, I'm just assuming that you have number of appointments, right? That, you know, again, here you want to have about 1,200 appointments at the 6,400. 300 appointments if you're selling $25,000 types of vacation. Again, I want you to sort of step back. If you're new to the travel agent, travel business, and you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, $25,000 packages, you know, that's like, you know, I, you know, I might as well just stop right now. I can't do that. I, I, I want you to even not even think about that, right? I did a group, group cruise, right, where I sold this group cruise to my warm market and I had 16 rooms and the total value of those six, those 16 rooms, I think I had eight rooms per level, I think balcony or whatever. So I think it was eight rooms per thing, 16 rooms. The value of that group booking was 33,000, right? So 16 rooms, 33,000 value of that booking. And I did that booking. I don't know. I did that, but it's for June. We started that booking in September of this year, right? So the rate was really good, and the average for this was at the $800 mark, right? So this wasn't even one of the higher marks. This was at the $800, but the value of that room group was $33,000, right? So per person, they only spent $800. Well, that was like per couple. They spent $800 for an inside cabin, $1,200 for a... Um, balcony, but you see, I immediately have put myself in this $25,000 mark, right? Because it's a group package and I sold, you know, I needed to sell 16 people into that group, but that was, that was at the 25,000. So if you do group bookings, you know, you immediately start to increase your value proposition and how many groups you need to sell. If you're doing group packaging, if you're doing individual packaging, even I would tell you a $4,000 package, you know, that's an average Hawaii. I think I did it last year. I did a Hawaii trip and their package was 4,500 and that was average. That was not a high end hotel. That was average. I quoted a honeymoon the other day and that honeymoon Hawaii cruise was 8,000. Almost, it was almost 10,000 with air and everything. So again, when we're in the travel business, the numbers you're not looking at what you would be willing to spend for vacation. You're looking at what kind of customers you want to attract and what you're putting together in terms of your travel niche, right? Getting in the multiple thousands for your travel niche is not going to be a difficult thing to do, right? So how you, the things that you do to get you there and the relationships that you need to be building is you really need to understand what the metrics are for your travel supplier, right? Do you have a travel supplier that's at 10%, right? That number's gonna change if your travel supplier is only doing 10%. But if you're working with a travel supplier that's 16 or 20%, your number's gonna go up drastically, right? You're not, I'm sorry, your number in terms of how much you need to sell will go down, but your income is gonna go up, right? So it's important for you guys to know what you're aiming for so that you can start to build these relationships with your suppliers based on the numbers and then also the value that you're going to bring to your customers. But you need to know the type of customer that you want to go after. You need to know how much money you want your average customer to be spending with you. You need to know how much commission you're going to be slated to get, right? So the very last thing that we're going to talk about in terms of numbers is conversion, your purchase conversion. So let's say you're doing 1,200 appointments a year. You should expect, you know, if you're really bad at sales, that's like being super conservative. You're really bad at sales and you just really suck at it. 10% is a really low number, right? That's 122 people that need to purchase $6,400 vacations for you to be able to hit and you need to be able to hit 10% of your thousand appointments in order to hit the mark, right? I mean, again, you really, 
if you're booking 1,200 custom appointments, right, or appointments with customers who are interested in booking and you've done your targeting correctly, these people at the time that they're ready to come to your appointment should be ready to book, right? You are just really meeting for their requirements and you're selling them on the services that you provide above and beyond just your booking, right? That they're, they've selected you, they've probably already paid a fee, your conversion rate should be higher. But I'm just saying conservatively, if you're at a 10% closing, you need to have a thousand, you know, twelve hundred appointments to close at one twenty-two to be able to hit the, the thousand, the hundred thousand dollar mark, right? So I'm pausing. I know that for some people, these numbers are all swirling in your head, and you're like, "What the hell?" <coughs> right? So you know, if you have any questions, I certainly am done and am prepared to um, break this down a little bit further. If you've got some questions, but you know, the key takeaways for you out of this conversation is. Who's your client? How much money do you want your average client to spend with you when they book appointments? Or, or I'm sorry, when they book appointments, right? So what your service fee is going to be. And then also what the average travel package is that you want to be building for these clients. Those are three key important things that you need to do. Based on you knowing who your client is and your niche should then define what your commission split is going to be, right? You know, obviously, I would want you to partner with those suppliers in your niche that had the highest percentage of commission split. But then the other factor that's important to you is your host agency. So if you're only getting 70% commission or 60 or 50 percent commission split with your host agency, that's going to impact your numbers as well, right? So you need to know all of the factors that impact your numbers so that you are making the best decisions possible, right? If your host agency is not at 80%, that's going to change your numbers. If your sales commission, your service commission split with your supplier is less than 16%, that's going to change the number, right? If you are averaging about $400 in, you know, travel packages every time you book, that's going to change the number. Right, So it's really important that you know the numbers, you're intimate with the numbers. If you're not a numbers person, this is the time to become a numbers person. When you own your own business, you need to know your numbers and all the factors that impact them. For the travel business, you've got some key factors that impact you. That's your supplier commission, your host agency commission, and the average rate of your travel packages that you want to be selling at. Many of you who are new, to the business, your first instinct is to, you know, you see the travel suppliers, you know, everybody and their mother is doing all these different, uh, cause it's, you know, it's the wave season right now in the cruise industry. So all the cruise industry is doing all these different packages and specials and you know, you name it, you're seeing everything, right? And you know, natural tendency for many of you is to become a budget travel agent. And I would tell you to shy away from that. Don't try to compete with Priceline and Expedia. That is not your value proposition. I tell you guys that all of the time. We are not trying to be a human version of Priceline. We are not trying to be a human version of Expedia or any of these other sites that do-it-yourself sites do. You're not trying to compete on price in terms of trying to offer vacations that create or sell at the very lowest price point. You're not going to make money if that's what you're trying to do. There, and, and it's going to become harder for you to, to, to position yourself as an expert when all this do-it-yourself exists that they can price beat, browbeat you on. Do not build a, a, a travel agency where you're trying to be budget-friendly. Right. It may sound like a great idea that you want to be a travel agent where you're offering the best, cheapest price for your customers. But, you know, how does that set you apart? Right. Why? Why? What is the advantage to do that? Right. I'm not saying if you have a deep desire to do that and that's what you want to do. Know your numbers. Right. If you want to sell and you want your average package to be $500 and that's the price point that you want to operate and that's the customer that you want to go to understand what it's going to take for you to make money, right? If you're trying to retire from your full-time job and make this your full-time income, right? Understand your numbers, okay? So I'm pausing. Guys, let me know if you got any questions. Um, is, does anybody want this spreadsheet? 
um, want to know. So some of the factors, let me just show you live how this works. So let's say your, your split is 70%. And it's not 80%. And we just changed this uh, number from 80 to 70%. Right? You see instantly that your numbers change. And your, you know, at the 6,400 mark, you were at 122 before in terms of your total number of purchases. But now you're at 140. Right? So the number is going to change. Well, let's say that this goes down to 8%. You're working with a supplier that says, that they're only going to give you 8% commission. Your blended rate now is 5.6, right? That significantly changes everything for you, right? Let's say this goes up to 20%, right? Let's say you're at 80% here, right? You go from 122 to 98 here if you've got a travel supplier that you're working with that gives you 20% commission, right? It's really important that you know the factors that go into how much money you want to make. If you want to only make $50,000, right, you can change the numbers and determine that as well. So really important um, that you know what your numbers are. And so, Tanika, I will absolutely upload this and give this to you in the group. But remember, Tanika, we are going to break this down for you um, at every level in Travelpreneur because we're going to talk about your service offerings. We're going to talk about your average package. We're going to talk about your customer. We're going to break this down. So um, for those who are students of Travelpreneur um, Foundations, we are going to break this down for you. If you are not a student and you don't know how to break this down, schedule a discovery call. And I do still have some openings for one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is something that you are going to want to know how to do. You're going to want to know how to identify your numbers. And you're going to want to know how to make sure that you've got a marketing plan that's going to allow you to hit you getting in front of the number of people that you need to get in front of so that you can have the number of leads so that you can ultimately sell to those people. This is the, but your business at the end of the day, ladies, ladies and ladies, because I don't have very many gents, ladies and ladies is all numbers. Nothing, nothing else about your business. It's all numbers. So you've got to become the expert of your own numbers. You need to know. And if you don't know, it's all about learning how, what your conversion rates are, right? Like if you are doing appointments, right? Are you converting at 10% or higher, right? Do you close 50% of the appointments that you set, right? Are you even having appointments? If you're just doing custom quotes and you're not closing any of that, even though you're not doing appointments, you still have a close rate. Many of you in the comments that you leave with me say, you know, I'm doing all these bookings, but nobody is, I'm doing all this research and doing all these quotes, but nobody's booking, right? Nobody's booking with me. They're just taking the quotes and either they're booking themselves, right? Something's broken in your process that we've got to fix to ensure that that doesn't happen to you, right? So you're doing this work for free. And you're not closing it, right? So there's great opportunity for you to increase your income by one, charging a service fee for that and get rid of the, the people who are going to waste your time. And then two, how do you improve your closing rate? Once you do actually get a quote, how do you make sure you get that quote turned into an actual books client, right? Okay. Now your numbers. I love the numbers conversation because you know what? If you, I, I can quickly, when I work with the client, tell how much money potential they have by understanding a couple of things. And some of the first things I ask clients are, what's your current email list? Are you, are you engaged with that email list? Most people will tell me I don't have an email list, right? That's the number one from a marketing perspective we've got to grow is we've got to create a communication path for you and your clients, your prospective clients, right? Um, all of this requires you to understand what you want to go after. So in order for you guys, if you know, if you guys are working on your goals and you're thinking about, oh, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. Now Sunday's told me I've got all this. Well, how do I structure my goals, right? Well, in the next 15 minutes, I'm about to host, rehost the goals se session that I botched in terms of 
I uh, I botched last week. We had it last Saturday, and the recording did not record it. It only recorded the chat, so I've got to record it again. So if you have not registered for the class, you still have 15 minutes to do so. I will uh, include the link for you. But we are going to be going over how to create your goals, right? One of your goals should be a financial goal, how much money you want to make, right? If you don't want to make, maybe you don't want to make $100,000. Maybe you only want to make $50,000, and you want this to be supplemental income, right? You still need to know your number. Okay, anything is possible when you know your numbers. Last message I want to tell you you can know your numbers, but if you don't believe that you can achieve it, you won't achieve it. Period. End of story. I will continue to pour into you all that is my community that your mindset has got to be aligned. You have got to be aligned. If you want to make a hundred thousand dollars. You need to set the intention that that is what you're going after. If you want to make seventy-five thousand, if you want to make fifty thousand, if you want to make three hundred thousand, whatever that is, you need to set the intention and you need to believe that you can do it. I just showed you how you can do it. These numbers are not unrealistic, right? Now, if we were talking about in order for you, you know, that a twenty-five thousand dollar package in our industry was a an un, a far fetched, right? You know, only ten percent of the people, you know, one percent of the people who book travel did it at this rate. Then maybe I would tell you that's a stretch. But I just told you, I put together a group package, sold it out to my warm market, and my group package was worth thirty three thousand, right? So this is not unfeasible. This is not. This is not. Unreachable. I don't even know how to come up with the negative words to it, right? Because I only think in positive. This damn it is reachable. This damn it is doable. This can be done, right? There's no question about can this be can this be done? You can be a six-figure travel agency. Absolutely, no question in my mind about it. You got to be willing to do the work. You got to be willing to set up the process to be successful. But as long as you're willing to do that, you can do it. All right. So if your mindset's right, you now know the knowledge. You at least know that you know the the process by which you do it, you need to know your numbers so that you can structure your business accordingly, then there's no reason why you guys are not achieving this, right? Give me some, give me some thoughts here. What do you guys think about that? Yolanda, you are so welcome. You know, because I will tell you guys, you know, I, I hit the six-figure mark in my career um, I'm 45, so I must have hit it about 15 years ago. And I, I, I've told you guys, I've come back. I came, I came from a very poor background. Food stamps, government cheese, you know, you know, I know what that means. I know what that looks like. That is not something, and, you know, I don't know that you guys know what that looks like, but I know what that looks like, you know, and I know what that feels like, and I know how I grew up. Right. So my desire to make six figures was the only thing in my mind in my life. And so when I hit that mark, I remember thinking to myself, I can't believe I did it. And that shouldn't have been my thought. It should have been like, well, what the hell took you so long? Right. And I really struggled mentally with my deserving of that money. Right. And my you know, I don't deserve that money or I shouldn't, you know, I'm not good enough for that or what have you. And there's a lot of mental things that I have had to overcome. And as I reach different marks financially in my, in my life, I have to stretch my mind in terms of worthiness and can I do it or should I be doing it? Why isn't it enough that I'm at this level? And you know what? I continue guys to tell you to bunk that, right? Bunk whatever those bitches are saying. You deserve to make $100,000 in your business. You deserve to hit whatever mark you want. If you want $50,000, I'm not saying you need to be at $100,000. Whatever that number is in your head, you deserve it and you can do it. We just broke it down on how to do it for $100,000. You want a number and maybe you don't understand that. Hit me up in the group and tell me, Sunday, I don't understand how to work this damn spreadsheet. How do I figure out, how do I make, if I want to make $50,000, right? I'll show you exactly what you need to do and I'll talk you through that in the group. Do not DM me because I want this to be a group conversation. This is Travelpreneur Education let me know in the group. I'm going to upload the spreadsheet. You'll be able to work the spreadsheet however you want. And I'm going to highlight in boxes the numbers you need to change if you want to um, make a difference. So 
what's going to happen is the boxes like this one is going to, I'm going to make the, these boxes because the box that you're going to want to change are these boxes right here. So I'm going to fill them with green and make them here. And these are the boxes that you're going to want to change the information to, to make the spreadsheet work for you. Okay. So I'm going to save this right now and I'm going to upload it so that you guys can have it and you guys can use it for your desire. And if you have any questions, um, let me know and we'll work it out. Uh, Travelpreneur, so my TF students, I got you. We're going to go over this in detail. We're going to be building your business around what your goal is and what your average numbers are and all of that. So don't worry. You will have some work in that space to do this. All right, ladies, it was great talking to you today. Invictus, this is our unconquerable year. Know your numbers, know your numbers, and you can accomplish anything. Get your mind right around your numbers. If you want it, you can achieve it. I love you guys all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.